Hi there. Um, we are going to continue on with our Indian elephant and we are going to draw out our designs and I just wanted to show you some really pretty designs in this Indian art. Um, this particular shape is a paisley design. I did a little research and noticed that some design scholars believe that the Buddha um, is the convergence of a stylized floral spray and cypress tree. It is a symbol of life and eternity. The bent cedar is also a sign of strength and resistance. The floral motif was originated in um, Sasanid dynasty and later in the Safavid dynasty of Persia in 1501-1736. The design is representative of a teardrop. And you'll notice in a lot of textiles, like my scarf for instance, has a number of different um, paisley designs um, on the scarves. And we can use some of these patterns that you see here and even on this scarf as well, you'll notice some smaller um, and larger um, paisley teardrop shapes that we can incorporate into our elephant design. Okay, so um, let's get started. And we also have some of these designs that can be added to your design um, in the background. So we're going to be, as you can see in this sample, we're going to be doing designs on the background as well as the headdress and the um, the um, like saddle blanket on the back of the elephant. So we're going to start by using a pencil. So for the project, we're going to start off with um, water cup with water, rag. Um, we're gonna use a medium brush. This one is a medium round brush eraser. I have two different um, Sharpie markers. I've got the fine point and the razor tip point. And, and then we'll see how much time we have for the actual uh, coloring but we'll get started. So we started last week with doing the headdress and now we can look at some of the patterns that you see on this scarf to create on the, the blanket on the back. So remember, it's a teardrop shape. So you're just gonna make a curve, round out the bottom and then go right back up to a point and you can go um, in different directions. So again, you're gonna curve like you're making um, a number six, curve in and then curve right to the top to create a point. So you can create back and forth designs on your blanket um, throughout and they can go in different directions throughout um, this area. So as you can see, it's fun to have them all going in different directions. You could go in the same direction if you were inclined to do that. You could even have part of the um, Paisley design go off the paper. So I'm just gonna make a curve here. Okay, so what you can do to this if you wanted to make it a little bit more detailed as you could add zigzags going along the back curve of your paisley design so they kind of look like a shark's fin so you can kind of see how they're zigzagging down to the bottom of that curve don't press too hard with your pencil in case you need to erase any of your design and you may need to move some paisleys over if they're overlapping. As you can see, these are not overlapping each other. And these are straightforward. And maybe the zigzags would be best using the fine razor tip marker. And remember, the permanent markers don't bleed out 
um, when they're used. So uh, you can look at some other areas to create some designs. Maybe you could do some dots on the inside. So as you can see, you can make it as detailed as you'd like, or you can make it more simplified where you could do just a big um, circle and a dot within the circle. Now I'm going to use uh, temper cake paint for coloring in the elephant. You could use a simple gray uh, marker if you'd like. You could use a um, colored pencil. You can use, um, I'm going to be using the temper. You could use watercolor if you'd like. So I think what we're going to do right now is we're going to start painting the elephant. I'm um, going to take a break from the designs and I'm going to dip my brush into the water. And what I'm going to do in my paint palette here, and you can do this on a, a dish, a shallow dish to do your mixing. So I'm going to mix some and make sure your brush is properly cleaned and that your paints are clean and you're gonna find a space that you can do your mixing. So when I mix white with black, I'm creating um, a tint and therefore making it more gray. So that's still pretty black. So also if I used more water on my um, brush, it would definitely make it lighter. So I'm continuing to make a nice puddle of paint in my palette that's empty. And then I'm going to start to paint my elephant. And you want to go slowly I like this gray. You can look at some pictures on the internet to see the different kind of gray values um, for elephants. And we're gonna add a little bit of shadow on our elephant after we paint it. And you can move this and you want to be careful not to paint over your black lines. So I'm going to just move your paint around. And then move it further down. If it gets too dark, you can just paint it out so that it's not too dark. Just dab a little bit of water on your brush and then move the gray around on your painting. I also wanna do the eyelid, the lower and top lid. And as you can see, I haven't dipped into my paint yet. I'm just trying to spread this around. Now I'm going to add some more. Now be careful because this is the bottom of the, the head, the neck area. And I was almost tempted to paint that part because I wasn't really paying close attention. So you need to really pay some close attention. And you wanna kind of spread it around and even the paint. And then continue on down the trunk. And just load up your brush 
with your paint when you need more. Now we're not painting the entire elephant because we didn't draw the entire elephant out. So we're just painting the side part of your elephant. And now we can go into the ears. And you see, I don't need to mix more paint up right now. So I made enough to move it around. Okay, and now I'm going to the body. Careful around the tassels if you've added them to the blanket. And work around any of the design. And I'm gonna leave the toes empty because I'm gonna add pink to them. So I think I'll just use a marker for that. So I'm gonna add some shadow to parts of my elephant. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of black. Now black is, can overpower any piece of work if it's not controlled. So you need to be careful with that. So I'm gonna add a tiny bit of white. And I'm just, I don't want it to look like it's got stripes on it, but I do wanna create a slightly darker space in front of the ear. and along the side of the trunk. So I'm just kind of feathering out that darker shadow so it doesn't look too, um, too much of a hard edge. You want it to be softer. And if it gets too hard, simply dilute it with water and move it over a bit. You need to kind of practice. And then I'm gonna add it slightly darker inside this area. Okay, good. And then I wanna add a little bit of shadow underneath and in the back leg. So it'll be slightly darker because it's um, in perspective, it's a little bit further away. And I'm gonna add a little bit more here, right in front of the other leg. And then I'm gonna add some behind this um, leg and a little bit in the back foot. And I wanna also add it right along the edge of the blanket. 
and the tassels. And you can see the shadows make a difference. So it's definitely worth the uh, addition of them, the shadows. Oh, and I also want to add a little shadow on the belly. And around the, and as you can see, I don't need very much. Okay, and just a tiny bit on the back part of the ear. I'm going to go along the top and then just bring that along the back. Just going along the side of the fold, as you can see. Okay. If it gets too dark, you can always use your rag and just pull up the darker areas with your brush and a tiny bit of water. That a little bit more on the neck and the fold here. Okay. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to be um, we'll let that dry. Meanwhile, we can be very careful and add design to the bottom or the background of the um, elephant. So as you can see, we still have some kind of floral um, and more pastel designs that we can add, or we can look at some of the designs on this um, sheet here. Uh, lots of circles. You could add suns if you wanted to the background. And these are circles with what look like antenna going around. Um, you've got the paisley, and here's a paisley that also looks like part of a, a flower design. You could also add something like this, which is a nice um, vine design, or you could do something like this, and that's the same one. It repeats here. Okay, so. You could do this. This is more like a heart shape with a pattern inside of it. Um, or you could just look at some of these kind of fun organic shapes. I want you to do it in pencil first. Um, so I'm just going to kind of play with this. And also make sure that your painting is dry before you start to work on this. So I think... I may add one of these interesting floral and kind of elongated paisley. I said make sure that your elephant is dry before you start to work on more like a teardrop that I can add a couple of shapes to. Like I 
sit in the other thing. You could do a circle and you could do a another circle inside of it. Okay, so the idea is to really fill up your background. And when you do that, then you can definitely add more color to the background as well. You can see a lot of these are kind of just simple organic shapes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my razor tip, which is the skinnier black marker, and I'm going to start to outline my design. So what I need you guys to do is I want you to continue to outline your designs and you can add more to it if it looks like it needs it. And then next week we'll explore um, color. We'll talk about the color wheel and we'll refresh um, the color wheel before we start to add color to it. So for the background, we're, we're going to be using colored markers. And as you're going, you can kind of add some more to it. You may first want to do it in pencil, then go over it with your marker. trying to keep inside my drawing. And definitely erase any pencil lines after I've traced it, clean it up. Okay, so what you'll need to do is you'll trace all of your pencil lines um, for your background. And then we will talk about color theory. And I just saw one area I wanted to add a little shadow to. Where was that? Oh, right here. OK. 
Okay, there we go. So you want to see lights and darks values on your elephant. Okay, so finish up tracing, erase any of your pencil lines. And then next week we'll finish this up. And then, like I said, talk about color theory and then continue on working to finish this project. And I think one idea that I actually like for the blanket is to have all the same design, whereas the background, it's kind of free, free form and there's no kind of pattern to it. But to stick with one kind of idea for your blanket, one kind of idea for the headdress, and then something completely different for your background. And if, it's the, if the painting is still wet, just kind of move it around so that you can get to it or just wait for it to dry and then finish this part. And the thing about art is that you can always add more to it there are no set rules in this particular project. Okay, so I'm gonna finish this up and I'll see you next week to go over the design and color. Thanks.